morning, sis. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Wonderful. Uh, yes. Uh, Daniela, could you kindly come to the studio? Please come in. There's something we need to do. Yes. Ariel celebrated her 50th birthday about a week ago. Saturday, Sunday. It was Sunday, Sunday right? past Sunday. This 50th birthday, we've been talking about it forever. <laughs> and so we will start the show by singing with our uh -oh. voices. <laughs> Please come and join <laughs> happy birthday to you uh, happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday, happy birthday to you and may god bless you now thank you may god bless you now may god bless you now may god bless you now That's a good way to soften and relax me a bit. I know. Because I am serious. <laughs> a blessed 50th birthday to you. Thank you. You don't look it. God's been gracious, hasn't he? Very gracious. He loves me too much. Yes, he has been gracious. Yeah. You're glowing, seriously. <laughs> um, and last night, you know, we did, we did some things. We won't you know? talk about it. Yeah, we did some things. We did some things. We won't know where we are coming from. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm really humbled and honored to be part of the inspirational series. Beautiful. Very humbled. No, but you are inspirational. You do have an inspirational story. 50 years, how does it feel? um i've always been i mean not age conscious so it just feels like being aware for the first time that i've grown mm. you know first time. yes i've grown but over the years turning 40 41 it just comes and i'm grateful and then i move on it didn't hit me like i'm growing but this one did it hits me i've grown you know yeah, so it, it feels like um, another time for me to reinvent myself. Let right. me use the word. I was, I was going to ask you, so now that it's dawned on you, because you did say that you're not one who counts ages, but now that it's dawned on you, yeah. what has it changed or what has changed? Okay, what has changed is um, I'm looking at, so 50. Mm -hmm. And reflecting, I started reflecting from November to December, and then the whole of December I was off social media, still reflecting and detoxing and thinking. For me, what has hit me is, have I really done fully what I wanted to do? And the answer is? And the answer is I haven't done half. No. The answer was no. I've been hiding. I've still been afraid, you know? And I'm like, okay, so what tools and resources can I use to overcome some of the fears that um, holds me from really jumping? So, you know, as you grow, you jump one and then maybe you hold on a bit, you're afraid to jump higher, you know? And becoming aware that I haven't jumped is part of the work. And I'm glad that I can agree that there's more I can do. Mm. I know, but sometimes I hold myself back. And so this year, turning 50, I'm like, I'm going to jump again. <laughs> no more holding back. No more holding back, yeah. I know we have had a number of conversations in this studio, not necessarily focused on you. Yeah. However, in between, you will tell us part of your story um, to be able to put our conversations in proper perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. But today, we would like to tell the whole story. <laughs> um, I'd like to start from what you are now did you set out always to become a wellness coach never okay i didn't know the word nobody told me about the <laughs> word yes that's the, the the amazing part of allowing sometimes which is uh, something a lot of us are afraid to allow life to unfold i never knew as at 2014 when i was opening my salon and spa I didn't know there's anything called a wellness coach. So why were you opening the spa? I opened the spa because I was I love beauty, grooming, and wellness, the 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 activity for well being, okay. not the concept of wellness. Okay. So wellness is not the activity as in going to the spa. It is the activity you are doing to achieve 
well-being. Mm. So I like the beauty, grooming. I'm a fashionista. I've been called that. So I went into the spa industry to help people bring out that side of them, take care of themselves, have their manicure, pedicure, facial, massage, I mean, cleansing and all that. And then to feel well, because after that thing helps you, somehow your personal image and also your stress levels to feel well. That was what I knew. Mm. But I didn't know wellness was actually a way of living. Okay. Apparently from 2006, I had developed myself to be living that way till 2012. I knew I've been doing something different, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was called, truthfully. When I was registering my company, Arrows Haven, I just said it's a beauty, wellness, and then grooming. I didn't say it was a salon and a spa. Okay. Arrows Haven, beauty, wellness, and grooming. So I was just doing my own marketing, writing. One day I decided to research on the word wellness. And that was 2015. It was an aha moment. It just hit me like that. Oh, yes, this is what I've been doing. I've tried to live holistically, not just taking care of one side of myself, but I've been conscious of, I mean, my social life. If the social connections are not working, what do I do? What boundaries do I create? I've been conscious of my spiritual growth. Am I living in love? I've been conscious of my emotional health. Am I taking care of it and allowing things? To... So I realized I've been living that life from 2006 to 2012. Ahead of 2006, all due to 2012 when you had this, should I call it an epiphany yeah. or discovery, right? Yeah. How were you living? I was living a depressed, mm -hmm. sad, cheerful. I mean, if you are one of my friends back then, you might have heard me being a very, very unhappy person. Very, very unhappy. Not just, um, I mean, I have a friend who said, when I saw you, you look beautiful, but your eyes, there was something in your eyes that told me you were unhappy. So all up until 2012, I had been so depressed, so unhappy. And I, I was trying to find out why. But I've, I'm one person who like um, asking myself questions. I'm a Christian, I'll go to church, I'll pray, I'll fast, we'll do revival. I kept asking, so why would God give me that atmosphere at church? And then when I come out, that she take it away from me. Mm. What do I do to maintain how I feel at church to feel the same when I come out? And I realize that what I feel in church is how I'm thinking in church. When I come out, then I'm thinking different. I take on the worries of the world, the things people have done I don't like and all that. And then I go back to being depressed, unhappy, sad. I mean, I don't know the words to you, anxious, fearful, you know? I mean, I had negative self-talk about myself so much that I almost lost myself with to that extent. So when I, 2006, I started reading a book, The Secret by Rhonda Bine. Before we, 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 we get into, you know, the change, we have had some of these conversations yeah. and if you don't mind, I'd like to pry a little bit. <laughs> so um, on Home Affairs and you, you have talked about the fact that marriage was one of those major events yeah. in your life like yeah. it is in most of us our lives yeah. and it was one of the those major events that caused a lot of pain and depression to yeah. you yeah. could you let us into it a little bit if you don't mind so we understand where this unhappiness and depression was coming from okay. before you were able to turn it around yeah you know how we are all cultured mm -hmm. go to school finish school get a job get married have children and be happy it yeah. seems like it should follow that pattern mm -hmm. and then it is done a well thought through and laid yes down plan. yes it is done when you get married and you have a child so and that was how i expected it i mean i thought it was just going to be done. Mm. So I wasn't doing anything else. I thought, if, I actually told my brother-in-law who was a pastor, oh, be a nanny, no way, Germany, in my name for le, in Bena. Wow. I didn't know it was, done. I wasn't done at all. 
myself and my husband have two different values and two different perspective about life and I respect his but um I, I couldn't live with it and so hold on don't forget isn't that in itself an issue it is an issue because um Bible has said that can two walk together except they be they, agreed it's true so and we're using this platform to also educate how did you end up marrying somebody uh, with whom you have different values different thoughts different outlooks to life yeah so my father was very strict number one so I'm so always eager to get freedom I want to be on my own I want to grow up I want to leave home so my that though I saw the the red flags the things that I knew very well is not my value they are not the kind of uh, beliefs I had I thought I love him you know when we are in love I said oh I love him he will change oh I love him I can change him and so the whole thing was you you have to marry at that age it is marriage nobody called me to to sit down and say can you live with this person that person this ideas he has this concepts of living is this something you can nobody called me to that awareness so I didn't have any counseling at all so I just went thing seeing all the red flags and all I said to myself I can change him were there moments where you were really happy with him for which reason you felt like the marriage would work yes there, there were, were. Okay. so when we we set the he's very entrepreneurial he okay. has ideas he likes to get things done when he's focused on something to get it done so he was a go-getter he wants to do everything he'll do this he'll do that you know but this needs to be a balance he can't do everything at the same time you know but I realized he had so much he wanted to live for for himself you know so I liked it I was happy because my background was not so much of um, people who were going after life on their own. So when I met him, it was something that I found very inspiring. Okay. He finished school and has never worked for anybody. Wow. That was one. He's always been working for himself from the music industry. He's, I mean, to starting his own business and hardware and all that. So he's been, he was on his own working so when what I changed? met him. What changed is that when two lives together, it's not the same as when two uh, are dating or courting. <laughs> yes, living together is a very different atmosphere. When decisions have to be made together, and then your beliefs and your lifestyles and your values don't meet. Okay. That is what changed. So you were hit with reality. I was hit with reality so <laughs> hard before I have my first child. Mm. But still, I didn't know what to do. I just... As a Christian, I know going out is not one of the options. So I said, this is it. I actually use the word, he's my cross to bear. I used to say that. Did you talk? Because those are some of the things we preach here on Home Affairs. Did our you talk about it? Our communication was totally not good. So I like the talking. He doesn't like the talking. Even before marriage? Even before marriage, yes. Okay. Even before marriage. If you raise any important com conversation, he won't respond. He won't talk about it. And so I try to talk, and then it seemed like open out feels a winning idea. You are always thinking, you know, you know. So that was one of our, our uh, clashes. He thinks I feel I know too much mm. because I want to talk about an issue and resolve it and move on. But he doesn't want to talk about it. So our communication was totally not good. Okay. Not good at all right up until the end we can't talk about anything and arrive at an understanding wow yeah okay so how did you move on from there um so moving on from there was in 2013. no no i actually want to understand <laughs> a, a little bit of that um you've told us how <coughs> sorry it was when you were dating mm -hmm. and then you got mm. married and realized that now we are living together and this was the reality yeah now i want to understand was that your biggest the marriage was it what really caused you yes. depression yes. and the sadness and yes what about it really i don't think it was just the issue of you not being able to communicate mm. what really caused that pain that pain was caused because i couldn't live the way i wanted to live the, the marriage i had envisioned 
how I wanted him to be my friend and live together, I wasn't getting that sweet. Okay. You can't have a friend who you can do everything with. You mm. can't talk to. You can't say, let's sit here and do this. Let's go out. Let's do this. There was no social life. Mm. I mean, anything I bring up that is not about work was like, I'm wistful. Okay. So, and I am the one brought up, I was brought up with a social life. I love socializing. I love being out there. And I was totally married to the opposite who thinks that is totally not necessary. Mm. It's uncalled for. So my whole life from uh, beginning of marriage till about 2007 was only about church. So what were you trying to adjust to suit him? Yes, I tried for a long time to adjust to suit him. But after my second child in 2006, I was so depressed that I almost la died during pregnancy. I oh. knew where I was. It was so bad. I could see myself in visions that I was going to die. I mean, there was a day I knew that when I put my head on the bed, that was going to be the end of me because I couldn't reach out to him in any way for him to. There was no um, sympathy, empathy, Whatsoever. caring, nothing. It was, it was like... I was in the marriage, but he was not filling me up with any of the, um, what do you call it, the, the needs for emotional support or the environment to thrive. So it, it really had hit me at that and time. And you wanted it from him. like I wanted it from him. Any woman would want it from her From husband. him. Until 2006 when I had my child, my second child, I had a friend who had a conversation with me. And he said so many things to me and said, when bizarre, you know, he told me so many things. Mm. Like, you didn't ask. I mean, these things can happen. Why? And I was home with my baby and going through uh, depression at that time. I mean, there was a day I drank myself to stupor with a baby. Wow. Thanks to my niece who was home to take care of the baby. But glory be to God, I was reading a book by... Um, Joyce Myers. Yeah. And Joyce Myers shared a very powerful story about her childhood abuse and how she was able to. Unfortunately, I read so many books, so I don't remember the title of Joyce Myers' book. But at some point, she said the Holy Spirit ministered to her and asked her, Are you not going to take responsibility from where you are? Are you always going to blame what happened in the past for the rest of your life and be down there? Don't you think God is calling you to move forward with what you have gone through? Mm. So she spoke about it as a word I use now, meaning self-responsibility. But that was not the word she used. Now I know the word, mm. self-responsibility. So I woke up one day and I said, so I can give myself permission to live and create the life I, I want, want, regardless if my partner didn't want to do the same thing with me. Is it possible? So from 2007, I decided I can't die. If before, I die, nobody, you nobody will die. understand. Did he at any point in time feel like, he, uh, oh, did, oh, well, let me, let me re-ask my question. Wasn't it as though you were asking too much of him? No, I wasn't asking too much, being that mm -hmm. it wasn't. I'm asking this because especially so when you did agree and knew that from the beginning, he wasn't the talkative. Yeah. He wasn't the person who would go out and be all over He's the place. He's a talkative. He doesn't okay. talk about the things we want, we need to talk about. Somebody would say but he if doesn't a talk third about person, the things that you want to yes, talk about. Yes, if there's a third person, he will vent and share what he should have told me. So he will person. tell it to a third person the way he want them to see his side. So sometimes things will come out, and I don't even know that that's what he's thinking about it. I'm asking all of this also because we are inspiring people. Yeah. There are lots of people, young people, you know, yeah. people our age who are not 50, <laughs> but I'm aspiring to get there very soon, yeah. you know, who are going through some of these challenges yeah. before you actually came to that light and realization, who are going through these challenges and um, are low with the benefit of hindsight. Yeah. Do you think that you could have done things differently from your side? Mm -hmm. Do you think so? Yes, I could have. 
I could have done things differently and not be side. that depressed and not have been that depressed totally I I just realized that I can't lose you nobody can lose their life because someone refused or doesn't want or can't function in this world the way you expect them to you can't mm -hmm. lose your life because of that at all at all that means you are trying to become a savior so all I was doing was trying to save him to see that this is a healthy way of living this is a way of living that he's working hard yet he doesn't want to live so for him he's working hard for a future but the future is just today and tomorrow and today and today and today but he is future oriented I am today here what do we do today here to move to tomorrow you mm -hmm. know so our perspective about uh, life was totally was different. it your way of communicating it again with the benefits of hindsight yes 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 let me were you being too forceful i'm a very um not to say that i'm good and good nobody can be all good i yeah. have my 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 low points i have my weaknesses so but you I'm, are a very I'm a sweet very person <laughs> thank you i'm i'm a very okay back then i'll say i'm always afraid he has a way that i became very afraid to even talk to him mm. So at a very early stage, I decided if he won't do it, then I'll do it. Okay. F I mean, thank to God, I was working. I was gainfully employed. I was. I had money. I could do it. So if he, I try to bring up something for us to do home or for us to do together, he doesn't respond or he doesn't give or he doesn't. I mean, come up with the support I need. I'll go ahead and do it, thinking I was supporting. So that in itself may be a problem to the person. Exactly. So that in mm. itself became a problem. That in itself became a problem. So I was just doing. So let me ask, then we move on. If somebody finds themselves in a situation like that, because yeah. it's a very practical one, we're in a relationship, there are things that I believe we can do today that will impact our tomorrow. Yeah. And I am asking us to talk about it and take actions towards it. Yeah. And my partner, and this, uh, I am actually talking in the case of a woman. Yeah. Who the, the man is not forthcoming. Yeah. They're not bringing their mind to the table. Yeah. And you, you feel so strong about it. Sometimes our temperament yeah. tells you that, look, this thing ought to be done. And like you're saying, you have the means, you are able to do it, and you take the initiative, yeah. and the person becomes offended yeah. or even more withdrawn yeah. because yeah. then they are thinking that, okay, you feel you know, yeah. you feel you have yeah. it, so yeah. go ahead and, and do, do it. it. Yeah. When you find yourself in a situation like this, what advice would you give women who find themselves in a situation like this? They are still in the marriage. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it happens a lot. I mean, I, will, I would now sit him down, mm. At some point, I just said, women should have been left in the kitchen. <laughs> I got to that point, Ed, then. I got to the point, I think, women shouldn't have gone to school at all. Oh, my God. Because it was so clear that that was the, the, the problem for mm, me mm. that I know. If I didn't know, I would just sit down, I mean, uh, put the cloth on my chest and just sit down mm. to be told, do this, do that, you know. But I know I'm educated, I'm working in aviation, I'm traveling, I'm seeing things. I wanted a good home for my children, you, you know. So it, it got to the point I said, women should have been left in the kitchen. That bad. But if ever I could go back, back then, one thing I knew I would have done differently mm -hmm. was not to have done the things I took upon myself to do okay. alone. Without his uh, support, without his consent, I wouldn't have done it. I had a friend who said, don't do it. Wait for him to, to, come, around. to come around. But I was, I was suffering. And I was like, if I have the means, why shouldn't I do it? But that's dicey too. It is. It is. I was going to come to a temperament, mm -hmm. knowing your partner. Okay. And how they respond to you may be different from mine, you know. So you may have a partner who will uh, come out and even appreciate that, oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry I couldn't do this and you have sorted this out. That is not part of my conversation. At all. There there's no day I have been given a thank you for doing anything. So, 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 <laughs> you know. So if you know the partner appreciates it and takes it in uh, well, it doesn't hit his ego, 
then you can find a balance, a way to maybe give it to him and tell him to do it. Yeah. But then I had n not been so transformed to know some of the tools and resources I could have used in that situation. Mm. And he's the type that once he says it, it shouldn't be done, it shouldn't be done. So if you're saying that when I said it was dicey, it's because you know this thing ought to be done. Mm -hmm. And so for as long as um, they won't come around, mm -hmm. you're saying that we should wait? No. Find out if that's why I brought up the type of person you are dealing with. If he will do it if you give him the means. Or you can do it and he will comment and agree. No, he won't comment. He won't comment. No. He won't so take it well. So let's say that he is that person who, who, who would take rather it well. feel threatened. Who would rather feel, feel threatened. threatened. If it bothers on your well-being, then go ahead and do it. Because your well-being is your responsibility. At that point, my well-being was at stake. And so it was my responsibility to do some of the things to have the kind of way I wanted to live to feel well. Hmm. Yeah. So if it bears on your well-being to the extent that it will affect you mentally, emotionally, that you become so afraid of life and can't sleep and tearful and sad all the time, I would say do it. Let me share a practical situation with you. So there's a, a friend of mine who's been meaning forever to travel with a family, mm -hmm. two children, mm -hmm. herself and her husband. Mm -hmm. she's, been, she's been dying to have that moment, yeah. right? And husband has always seen it as waste of money. It's not like they can't afford it. Yeah. They can afford it yeah. over and above. Yeah. Yeah. But he just doesn't see yeah. the importance yeah. of it. Yeah. But she also feels like, look, we didn't have it when we were growing up. Doesn't mean we can give it to our children. Exactly. Let's expose them a little exactly. bit to the world. Exactly. Especially so when it is with us mm -hmm. and we are guiding them along the yeah. way. No. Yeah. And she feels like, okay, I will get it done. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't with any bad intention. If you won't go, no problem. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fund mm -hmm. it, no mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. But I am able to. And so I will go yeah. out with them. Yeah. And their home has never been the same yeah. ever since. Yeah. She's gone and come back with the children. Yeah. The children are happy, the experiences and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But the home has never been, been the, the same. same. Yeah. So in this case, should she have just not done it? Because now she has done it. Yeah. The children are happy. Yeah. She's ticked a bucket, uh, something on her yeah. bucket list. Yeah. But there, is, also there is a perpetual something. Yeah, consequence in her So home. the thing is, every choice comes with a, a consequence. consequence. So you, once you know the consequence that will come, you prepare yourself. Mm. So yesterday I was having a session with one of my clients and I said, if you're going to do something mm. or have a conversation with somebody and you know very well, what they would do, then you have an expectation. So prepare for the expectation. You know very well, he said, don't go. We don't need to travel. I was there. It got to a point I would travel only with the children because I just couldn't be bothered to do it for all of us anymore. I'll just do it for myself and the children to travel, you know. So you know very well he's against it. So once you go and come, he's hmm. not going to commend and clap hands and say, for oh, you've you. done well for you. So what can you do? One is a mental shift to know that there's nothing I can do for him to appreciate it. But I'm going to, ha I've done it anyway. I'm going to give myself the forgiveness I need that I did it because I needed it. My children needed it. And I told myself right from childhood, I'm going to give my children the kind of upbringing I wasn't giving. So I was eager to let my children have this, I mean, opening space, growth into Things that were coming up to grow well, not backwards, but forward. So if she has done it, she should forgive herself. Just know if, if the person is that toxic, what activities, what practices, what can she engage on her own to care for her emotion? We do things and, and we know. Mad, do you know. Yeah, but you, so we get stuck because we still expect the person to change. Nobody will change until they realize they want to change. Mm. So you going and coming, it's not going to change Your him. Your actions may really never change it, it, it won't change him. I see. So find tools and resources you can use. First is forgive yourself you did it anyway because 
you needed it. It was good. It was good. You needed it. It was good for the children. It was good for you. It's an exposure. It helps you mentally, emotionally, physically, and everything. And even spiritually helps you to explore life, you sure. know? Yeah, to expand. And that was all I was asking for. Let's expand this life. Don't live too small here. There's more out there, you know? And, and so she should just forgive herself. Find tools and resources to take care of the consequences that have come. There's one or two things the husband like. What can I do to start shifting him from that conversation? Find some way to do something that can appease him to move the conversation a bit. Because you have to live well. You I'm are here to live I well. I'm sorry to say this, but in, in some circumstances, men find it so difficult to forgive. Things that women would forgive easily, yeah. they won't forgive easily. <laughs> it's been about two years, yeah. right? It's been about two years yeah. since this happened. Yeah. And he's still very, very, very upset yeah. about it. His ego is being hit that I bad. tell you, and it's affecting yeah. everything. everything. Yes, yes. Talking, intimacy, mm. everything mm. is affected. Yeah. And so that's how come I was asking you that. I, I know you're telling your story, but... The essence of this story is to inspire people yeah. and help people to make good decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Is I have done this one thing I so wanted to do yeah. against this person's yeah. will. I, I didn't I didn't do anything wrong. That's how she's feeling. Exactly. That that's the thing. Ninety percent of the things we want to do is not actually bad. I mean, but right now the marriage is threatened. It's threatened because you have a a, a, um, um, a need. It's it's sad that I coach a lot of women who have things they want to do, even career wise, and the man says, "Don't no. do it." No, you know. But we need to come to the place where we will give ourselves the permission without the understanding of everybody. That is mm. self permission. Right. Self permission is giving yourself an understanding or the permission to do the things that go after that reaching for that big goals that you want give yourself permission everybody won't understand you including maybe your spouse and as much as it threatens it sadly it is part of the journey for your transformation All right. for me that process was the beginning of my transformation hmm. i mean i do sessions with people and they ask your marriage brought you your transformation made you become a wellness coach why didn't you become a, a relationship coach and i said i realized it wasn't the relationship in itself that brings fulfillment it is totality of well-being that i was seeking i wanted a holistic i wanted all of life i wanted to smell the roses i wanted to i mean enjoy my children i wanted to walk barefooted i wanted to do everything and all of that is not all in one relationship and you're living it i'm, I'm, I'm you're living, living it, it out i'm living it <laughs> we'll come back to talk about the self-discovery the reinvention and the wellness okay wow this girl is living it up she's <laughs> living it up she's living it up <laughs> wow Okay, I don't know what's happening here. But if you're just joining us, this is Home Affairs on Joy 99.7 FM. My name is Adam Knight. Today I have been talking to Ariel, the wellness coach. Heaven here. journey with her very eventful After giving it my all. but let me remind you that yum vita infant cereal infant cereal with milk is fortified with nutri v which contains 16 essential vitamins and mineral including zinc iron and calcium to aid in baby's healthy good it comes in three delicious flavors maize wheat rice wood variants and three unique pack sizes 50 gram 400 gram, 350 gram, and that's the block bottom pouch. Best suits your family needs. Yum Vita, a delicious way to grow. 
And for your eye care challenges, look no further. I'm Masha Partners Limited has it all. Your eyes deserve the best care and quality designer eyeglasses. I'm Masha Partners and Eye Care undertake the following services. Supply of designer frames, sight testing, supply of lenses, sunglasses, contact lenses, ophthalmologist in attendance, and general treatment. There's no more fire. Junction, McCarthy Hill opposite Benji Lodge, not Kanishi, Swan Lake opposite Greenhand Junction, Ashimoto, Dinsua floor, um, second floor inside the Dinsua Plaza. And when you go to Takrade, you'll find them on the Axim Road opposite the CBG Bank Hall opposite Housing Junction, Kumasi, they are the airport roundabouts, Kolibu opposite ECG and Kufuridwa Central Hospital Road. And in Tema, they are inside um, the, Meri Me the Meridian Plaza Community One. The numbers to call 0302-939850, 0302-939850, and 0302-778827. You can follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Nine point seven FM. We are hanging out with my big sis Ariel, the wellness coach. You should see her glowing, <laughs> beautiful. Takes so much inspiration from her. She's telling us her story. That her story along the fifty years, <laughs> and it's so so inspirational. I have a message here that says, "Good morning, Adam. A real story is so similar to mine." Thank God I'm a better person since I fled that marriage with my kids after 18 years of emotional torture mm. and pain. My kids and I are a wonderful team now. Yeah. Self-responsibility yeah. and yeah. realization yeah. is yeah. key. Yeah. And this is from Gina. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what I have been drumming out. Recognize and live reality, not perception. Yeah. And also, you can't change any human being. Yeah. However, they can adjust. Make personal changes to meet you halfway. This is from Nana Kwesi. And this one says, Adam, I think Ghanaian women are too dependent on their men. I am not talking about money here. All other things. Yeah. I if want my coming. wife to be um, an independent thinking person. Yeah. And this is from KK in Oyarifa. Good morning, Adam. Ad Ariel has really done well. I have gone through the same things she is um, sharing, even worse. I don't know what kind of grace kept me still in this marriage for 23 years. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Sis, let's move on now. Yeah. So the journey to self-discovery. And I yeah. think that a lot of people, and, and let me just say it here that you don't need to be out of your marriage to discover yourself. At all. No. If it, I'm sure in her case, it so happened that her life was threatened. And if it so happens, 
um, there's not much you can do. Yep. But we are not saying that if you find yourself in a difficult marriage, the only way out or the only way you can be happy is, is to, to wish to be out no, of it before no, you can discover no. yourself. Yeah. That's not our position, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. not at all. Great. I, I, and I want to say it here, I didn't leave my marriage. My husband actually left. Okay. I did not. I had no intention, of no leaving. plans as such. Because I had found a way of living and I was thriving right there. Okay. I was doing Go me on, preach. right there. Mm. But the thing is, doing me, he didn't like it. How did you come into that? So I realized it is not so much of what is not given to us, but more of what we are not ready to give to ourselves. Okay. So I started giving to myself. I took my children as my two handbags. And they are still my two handbags. I celebrated my 50th birthday with just my two kids. Wow. They've been my handbags from 2007. Oh, so that video you took, it was Eileen who took it? Or it was uh, yes, yes. It was yes. Daryl. It was Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yes. They have been my handbag from 2006. I'm sure they admire you so much. They do. Mm. They do. And mm. when I read uh, Joyce Meyer's book, and then I 2006, I read The Secret, I just decided I'll take responsibility for my thoughts, mm. take responsibility for my choices, my behavior. Okay. What can I do? It doesn't have to be two people doing the same thing. What can I do? So from then on, I decided I will take care of myself. And when we talk about taking care of yourself, it's not just about eating, sleeping, and going. Mm. Practices, activities, things you're doing. My number one savior mm. was reading. Okay. I had so many things to do, but I had nowhere to go. So reading was all over me. I read so much, and that was where the whole thing started from, reading. Great. And this year, I'm starting my book club. Yay. This year, that was, that's one of the things our God has been calling me to do, start a book club. So reading was what actually became the first thing I did. From 2003... I read all the Christian books. I had faith, but I didn't have uh, action. And the Bible said, faith without action okay. is dead. I had all the faith. But in 2006, I started taking action. I did things. I decided. I took decision. And I walked my talk in a respectful way. Mm. So much that I had to buy a car in the name of my brother. It has to be that because I know if I do it this way, it will cost me that way. Wow. So every choice I made while I was living right there was not to live, but just to thrive. And my decision was, I'm waiting till my kids are 18 years. So I was there and I was ready to be there till then. Wow. But I, had, I developed. I wasn't depressed anymore. I wasn't crying anymore. I wasn't um, begging anymore. I could drink myself to stupor just to get attention. It doesn't come. I stopped all that and started being caring mm. to myself, loving myself. You would have just died one day. Yes, I know. I almost <laughs> did. I did. Drinking to get attention. Oh, yes, yes, you yes. You would drink, you would booze, you I, would sleep, you I, wake up and you face the... When uh, uh, Madingo came, <gasps> I could drink a whole bottle. Sorry. <laughs> To stupor. Just to get attention. Just to get attention. Just and to I realized empathizing. when I'm happy, I will be made to just, what it's like you can't be happy in, around him. No. And when I'm sad too, there's no help coming. So where, where was I? Oh, dear. So I had to just say, forget no. it. I'm going to be happy anyways. For myself. Of myself. I take my kids. If I see a holiday, if I see an opening, if it's Sunday after church, what can we do? If it's cooking, I want to do. If it's travel, I want to do. If it's, I mean, I did it with the children. Mm. I mean, I come home and they were, I come home and knowing that they are the reason I'm coming home. Mm. I just disconnected. And that is one of the things I wish I knew back then. Mm. I totally disconnected that I was married and I connected with my children and was living on there. That was where I was. So, as you are saying, it's not about living. It's about how to find the tools and resources and practices to thrive right there in hell. Mm, mm. How to create heaven you in hell. You should write a book, Thriving in Hell. Thriving in Hell, yes. <laughs> how to thrive right there. Wow. 
And two things always happen when you discover yourself and you grow. If there are toxic people around you, they either will rise with you if they realize, yes, this thing is blooming and it's nice. I like mm. it. I would want to be like that. Or they will just leave you. And that was where I got to. So I didn't leave my marriage. My husband left me. And, and it is this realization that all of us are benefiting from today. <laughs> yes. Oh. And, and I mean, I was redundant in September 2013. My husband walked out of my marriage September 2013, two days for the last day I'll go to work. And that following Saturday, I got to rent a place and decided to open a salon and a spa. Ariel's Haven. It's coming Ariel's to that. Ariel's Haven. Alone, I went on and a dream I had from 2003 that had been thrown under the carpet. I relived it. Because in you were waiting for him. Because I was waiting for him to come with me. From 2003. I wrote it. I typed it. I I. I, I, I had every room and what I would do, I had it typed in 2002. And I waited from 2002 to 2014. How many years are this? That's 12? 10 years. 12 years, yes. Yeah, 12. 12 years. Wow. Before I did it. And I was, I had just been abandoned. I was just gone redundant. I had two children. And I decided to invest all the money I had saved over the years of my career into the project and I invested everything and I lost everything as well and I decided to move on as well and, and just in what here. yeah I've always been meaning to ask you about Ariel's Haven yes what happened to it so Ariel's Haven was a saloon and a spa very beautiful three bedroom house I rented and converted into a beautiful haven just as the name says and it's not easy starting a business and yeah. handling it alone. I know. Having invested all the money now, how to turn it by investing into it and paying and buying, it has to be what comes and what goes. So rent became a problem. I looked for partners. I looked for investors. I mean, I was alone. I, I go to banks. Banks want to see the money you will get to pay them back, and I didn't have to it there to prove it. I was still working 8 to 5 while I was running the spa, which I still think if I had known what I know now, maybe I should have jumped back then to take full Sh management of the place. But yeah. then I was still I had still fears. And as I say, we always keep jumping one day at a time. So I wanted to know that I still had a salary. So I didn't have any husband to help me with the project or anything. So I was still working because I had two kids living with to me as care. well. So uh, four years down the line, I was having challenges to pay my rent. And my landlady, after four months of uh, not paying rent, she locked us out. Wow. It was a big blow. <coughs> but God being so good, I, <coughs> I was praying and asking God, what should I do? What should I do with this? Then just 2016, I had been certified a wellness coach, but I still needed the spa to be able to do all the things. I mean, if the spa was there and I was doing all the things I was doing, and now I can pull people to the spa, but it is not there. So I was working in Takrade. I had to be working in Takrade weekly and coming to Accra. So I had some time to meditate, to pray, and ask God, guide me, tell me what to do with this situation. And I found peace to let it go. It wasn't easy to not take one Ghana CDs from almost a million dollar investment, Adam. Not one Ghana CDs. Not one Ghana CDs. I had to shut down. I can, Sadly. I can relate. I, I've never been emotional about this subject. I am so sorry. Ooh. Daniela, please get her tissue. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Wow. So, 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 so. Bring me down. Heaven, hear me now.
I'm sorry, Ariel, that I had to ask you about Ariel's Haven, and that actually broke you down. I can imagine. I could relate. I can relate. I ran a preschool for 10 years. And, you are here. and it had to go the same way. It had to go the same way. Um, when it had to go the same way, you know, I actually, that was, that was what I did for my, f when I turned 40. That very day was when I launched the place. Exactly a year, it had to go. So you can, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you i prayed i asked god what do i do with it what do i do with it and um i had to pack everything and take it to yeah Finally, I got to know what wellness is and then I know what I've been living. I said, oh, yeah, this is what I want to. From 2012, I knew I had something to share. I see people and I want to tell them something, but I didn't know what it was. Actually, at some point, I thought I was going to become a pastor, which I am. I teach more at churches than I teach at corporates, so I'm happy to be doing that. So um, when I So you feel fulfilled? I am fulfilled, totally. Great. Regardless, I see every challenge as part of the process to birth my purpose. And so I look back and I'm just like, ooh, if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't be, be here, here today. So the thing is, if you make it a victim story, you won't see the purpose in mm. it. If Preach. you try to make your story as a victim story, simply looking for sympathy, everybody should come in here. I mean, I know my parents look at me and they're like, what's what this girl? Is she normal? I, I haven't broken down when at the places people had broken down, you know. I fall and I find my way to rise again. I fall and I find my way to, to just carve out something out of where I fell. So when I fall, I'm looking at what diamond, what gold, what silver, what is dead to pick, to transform. And when the spa finally left, I decided I'm taking the wellness coaching on. I'm already certified, so I started. I mean, when I got certified, I was so scared to do anything because I realized wellness was big. And here is me, little Olivia, saying I'm a wellness coach. But it's been one courage to the other. And courage doesn't come just because you said courage. You have to be nurturing yourself, your mind, finding things that input, put into yourself to be able to stand. Adam, every day I get up, there's some fear at something I'm about to do. But I do it anyway. Either I'll go for a good walk in nature and commune and meditate and tap into the power of nature. Either I will, I will meditate, I will read a book, or I will inspire myself and get some strength in my mind that just go through this one day. And so it's been a fulfilling journey for me. I would love to live this life again and, and again, again and again and again. And again. I'm not changing it for anything. I don't want to give it this story to anybody. It is my story. I love it. I find purpose in each and every trial. I find purpose in it. I look at my children. I look at my daughter now, and it's like, oh my my. Yeah. Oh my my. I now. don't. I don't know. It was going to be this beautiful. I'm still glad. I did some of the things I did. I mean, yesterday she had a conversation with me, and the conversation was quite deep. Mm. And I said, I didn't know. I haven't told you this over wow. the years. I did it, Eileen. I did all that. I, I, I'm telling you, I, she, she, she thought I could have changed daddy. And I said, Eileen, I tried. Didn't I tell you? I did all. She said, the things you are telling me, you are saying, you, he should hear them. He should I said, I tried to the extent that I had to stop talking because he said, don't talk again. Wow. You know, so it, it's, it's been a journey. And putting it and um, shifting people's perspective to see how we can... Um, discover who we truly are and be accepting of where we are and live it is so fulfilling to me i mean yesterday somebody sent me a feedback one of my old old uh, uh, tribe members and 
I'm so it happy people are understanding what wellness and self-care oh, wow. is and living it now. Yes. Thank you, Ariel. <coughs> the next um, 50 can only be even more glorious. I kid you not. We, we are going to step up more this year and do bigger things. And, and note that a lot of lives have been inspired have been transformed i said on i wrote on your you know birthday that i thank david yeah for, yeah for for introducing us you know it was a very eventful meeting i know and i thank him for introducing us and i'm very glad that yesterday you we, know, we you were know, with him together <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a good one and i'm, yeah. I'm glad i know you me thank too. you so much you me are too. a sweet person knowing you has been a blessing to me giving me the opportunity person. to share and impact lives has been a blessing to me you are it's a beautiful a blessing person god bless you so much thank you i do hope that you have taken some nuggets from our conversation adam in fact these things happen i for instance i have decided to take my destiny into my own hands because yeah. if i had waited to seek my husband's consent um, I wouldn't have gotten even my university diploma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he belongs to a different school of thought. Mm -hmm. I now have my master's and I know he feels threatened. Yeah. Um, he's not supposed to be, so talk it over with him. Good morning, Adam. It's been a touching story and God bless your guest for sharing, Ajuman Joseph. Good morning. Your guest's life story is very touching, but in all, God has been good and faithful to her. Indeed, I'm tearing myself. I know how it feels like. So, t so sorry, Ariel. Uh, but hey, you have a very inspirational story. You're loved. Be strong. This is from Nanaya. <laughs> Ariel got me crying. Issues of life. Indeed, Adam, women have to discover themselves wherever. Anyway, I am a product of positive thoughts and yeah. reading. Yeah. And yeah. wow, yeah. I am tearing too. This story is so, so me. In my case, the police had to force me to flee before I got killed. I fled without a pin, rented a place for myself and kids, brought them both up alone. They are both in college now. I'm now trusting God to give me a place <coughs> of my own. I hope to meet Ariel one day. I believe my story will encourage other ladies. Yeah. That inner strength to move on is so important. Beautiful discussion this morning. More blessings. Adam, this is from Gina. Thank you all so much <laughs> for being here. Our time is up. Uh. I do hope that <laughs> you have taken one or two things home. Ariel, for one or two people who might, who might want to meet you up for coaching, yeah. could you put your contact yeah. out? Yes. So I have my offices on the Sunny, Sunny FM premises where I do my coaching consultations. If you want to call to do a booking for a reservation, you can call on 243 600 899 and you can reach me on that thank you oh this is a beautiful cake <laughs> yes and happy birthday we got a real cake we're going to cut it after the show on facebook but look out for look out for these inspirational moments on home affairs this year next week you will be amazed at the conversation we are going to have so stay right here happy anniversary to my darling auntie sabina and her husband edwin mr and mrs aye aye tay they are six years in marriage today, and I pray that their home will never run out of laughter. This is from Daniela. Love you so much, guys. All right. Thank you all very much. Um, enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, everyone. Oliver, thank you so much um, for being <laughs> on the production desk. Um, we are out of here, and we will see you next week. Yeah, Enjoy thank you, all listeners. Weekend. Thanks, my friends, for and all the messages. I'm getting them. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you all. All right. Bye for now.